So today we're going to take a look at using ID maps um, exported based on, on vertex color from Blender into Substance Painter to use those maps as masks for different parts of the model. Uh, so just a quick a brief overview of kind of what we're going to take a look at today. So if we take a look at this boot here, this is a, a very low poly boot. It's 491 triangles. And uh, you can see there's no extra geometry, no detail. It is just a smooth shell. So I already have this one baked, and I'll actually go through this again later. But for now, let's take a look at... Um, so we have all these normals baked on. Now, going into this, uh, with this video, I'm making the basic assumption that you understand the uh, kind of game asset pipeline in terms of uh, retopology and UV unwrapping and baking textures and, and all of those things that you would do to get an asset from a high poly uh, sculpt or assembly to a low poly game ready model. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with parts of this pipeline you might want to go um, check on those. There's still some really useful information in here uh, so feel free to continue watching but just know that it, it might get a little confusing if you don't know what some of these terms are. Uh, that being said, so now I have this this boot here with all this detail baked onto it from a high poly model. But now let's say I want to paint this. Well, in the past, what I would do, I already have a leather here, uh, a layer here set up. So we are going to take this um, material here. So we have this leather. Now let's say we only wanted this uh, bottom area of the shoe to have this leather on it. So what I would do in the past is add a mask and then I would try and uh, paint in this mask to display this color in the most efficient way I could. So first you think okay well maybe UV space uh, but you can see there's no geometry that follows this. None of this detail has any geometry so my UV is very different from the underlying detail. So if I click on this UV chunk, it's going to do this whole bottom of the shoe. So I don't want that. So then it'd be like, okay, well maybe I go to polyfill uh, and that's good too, but you still have to go manually erase the edges. So after trying a million ways, you just get frustrated and you end up grabbing a brush and going in and hand painting all of your masks which is a huge time sink and a huge pain in the butt. So there is another way using ID maps and we are going to take a look at just how we do that. All right, so let's take a look. Here we have uh, a shoe. This is a high poly shoe, as we can see down here in the corner. Uh, it's 265,000 triangles, which is a bit heavy for game use. So um, this shoe was made by uh, Yassin Brennis. I got it off an art station pack. Uh, here's a picture of the store page. You can search it on artstation.com, or I'll leave a link down below uh, if you want to go see any of uh, these great packs. Uh, so here is a is a high poly shoe, and now I have already retopologized it um, with a low poly version. Um, you know, uh, 491 triangles. So much better for for game use. And you can see there's some rough edges and stuff. But honestly, in a game, the closest you're ever going to see a, a boot like this is is here uh, or so. And usually, it's going to be smaller than that. So it's okay if we lose some detail the textures are going to look great so now we have uh, uh, this and how and we want to bake the textures which I'll do in substance uh, but when we texture you have all these little details and none of that detail is on our low poly shoe uh, so it, normally the way I would have gone in in the past uh, to do all of my little details, once I had baked out my normals, then I would have gone in and, and masked each of these little sections by hand. So if I wanted all of these little eyelets to be a brass material, I would go in with my tablet and, and paint in masks on all of these. And that's a huge uh, time sink. It, it takes a lot of time and it's hard to get it clean and there's got to be a better way, right? Well, well, there is, and it's called using ID maps. So what we can do 
is on each of these sections. If we go in and look at the geometry on this shoe, all of these little bits are separate pieces. So the first thing we want to do is, is break this up uh, in, into its separate components. You have a couple ways you can do that. While you're in edit mode, uh, you can separate by loose parts, which is fine, but then the problem is, is when you go back into object mode, each of these is a different little piece. And um, so you can do it this way and then go rejoin the ones you want. What we're going to do is make all, all of our separate material masks as a different vertex color. And we're going to use that as, a, as an ID mask inside of Substance. So uh, instead of doing what I just did that way, I prefer to, there we go, um, do it this way. So now while I'm in edit mode, I'll go ahead and just select, I'll use L um, to select link geometry and I will use, uh, use that to separate each piece that I want. So I want this sole, but I, I want these pieces to all be the same. I don't want them to be a separate color. So that's up to you how you want to split things up as I'm just using this shoe for an example. This will work on any model that's made up uh, of separate geometry. So, um, so then I'm going to hit P and I'm just going to separate by selection. So now that sole is its own separate piece. Uh, and we're just going to go through the shoe and I'm going to do each one of the sections that I want separated. So we're going to do that first. And you don't have to worry about going and naming these or making them make sense. Uh, we're going to rejoin them all in the end anyway. I just, I'm separating them for ease of use in the vertex coloring process. So basically each one of these that I want to be a separate material, I'm going to separate off into its own chunk of geometry. So this buckle is its own thing. And then with the little eyelets, I want all of the eyelets to be the same material. So I'm just going to select all of them. So when I separate them off, they stay together as a single object. And I don't have to go rejoin them. The reason I want them all to be a separate object is because when we go and use a flood fill in the vertex painting, it makes it much easier than having to go paint each one and make sure you got the colors all right and didn't mess up and all of those things. So uh, we're going to do this real quick. Okay, now we have our eyelets separated. Okay, so now we have that all done. And what do we do with it? So what we're going to do is we are going to take each of these sections and make them a different vertex color. The shortcut, you can click up here and go into vertex paint. The shortcut to bring up the pie menu is control tab. And then you can just click on vertex paint. And then what we're going to do is each layer. So uh, it doesn't matter what colors as long as they're all different. So if you select a color with your, your piece selected, so we have this upper piece, you can't see it, but you can see we're coloring on it. Instead of painting it, we're just going to hit Shift K, which is a flood fill. Once again, Shift K is the shortcut for flood fill. So then I'm going to Control Tab, go back into object mode. I'm showing you this slowly right now, but I'll go really fast here in the future. Uh, And now the reason it's showing up for me to fix the setting so you can see. So normally uh, it's just going to show your material and you don't see the vertex colors. But if you go up here to your overlays tab uh, or no, nope, to the shading tab and click and open that up. And if you switch uh, your color to attribute, then it's going to show you the vertex color for that. So now we're just going to go through and do each layer real quick, and then we're going to export and take this thing into substance. So, in any color, any layer that you want to have the same material, make sure it has the exact same vertex color for the mask. Okay, so now the entire boot is, every piece is has a separate vertex color. So what we're going to do with that is take it into substance. So, uh, and the what I'm showing you assumes that you already have 
a, a high poly and a low poly version of a model if you need help with uh, retopology or that sort of thing then uh, that would be a different topic this is about ID masking in substance so now what we are going to do is uh, I'm going to take all of these pieces and now if you want you can join them all back together um, and we'll just call it shoes high so now we have this item with all of the separate vertex colors on it sweet and then we'll go look at this uh, this boot here you can see we have it unwrapped and ready to go so now we're going to export this uh, I have not gotten this to successfully work with an OBJ so we're going to export this as an FBX all right and we'll just call this pocket boot LP now when you export uh, make sure you only select uh, selected objects so it doesn't get all of your things and you also want to switch the smoothing from normals to face um, at least for me I'm making this for unreal and unreal prefers uh, face smoothing it'll give you an error if you only do normals so there we have our low poly and we have that exported and now in the exact same place uh, with the same origin same size same measurements and all of that we have our high poly and we will export that into uh, pocket boot hp okay so now we have those exported we're going to go ahead and save this and exit out now let's go take a look in substance Now, in substance, we're going to go ahead and make a new project. Uh, 2K is probably plenty for this, and we're going to go select our shoe. So we're going to import, oh, it's not that one, it is this, and we're going to import our low poly. So we have our low poly shoe in substance, and now when we bake, uh, if we go to bake our textures, so it, we're going to go into the texture set settings and go down. Let me make this a little bigger so you can see. And we're going to go down to baking mesh maps. Now, under the mesh maps, I like to make sure that my all my maps are the same resolution as the texture. So the, the pixelation matches uh, when you zoom in on things. Then we will select our high poly boot as our mesh. Now we're going to do a few things. A there's a lot of deep detail on that boot so I'm gonna turn up my frontal and rear distance I want to say like 0.12 is what I had that before when I tested this and that is good I like to anti-alias those maps as well so I get nice smooth you know dirt generators and, and edge generators based on those curvature and ambient occlusion maps and then in my ID I'm gonna switch the color source from material color to vertex color so now I'll bake these textures and we'll see what happens. So now we have our boot all baked. Uh, I think it looks pretty good, pretty clean. And we can see we have this ID map and you can see stuff on the UV. But let's go, if we want to see what actually happened there, let's go take a look. So let's just add a fill layer. And in the color, we'll search for our ID map. Uh, if you type in project, it'll show you any of the maps for this uh, project. So um, yeah, so then you can see that now we have all of these colors baked onto a texture map in Substance, and we can use these different colors uh, to create masks for texturing. So let's see how we do that. Let's go ahead and change this to just another base color. And when I work, I like to work in folders. Um, to And the reason I, I do that is so let's say I have just this bottom this purple blue section as this leather and then I want to add a dirt generator or, or mask out some things or paint some stuff by hand on it uh, if I mask out this 
folder in addition or instead of any of these layers, then I can work just within that folder and I don't have to worry about um, jumping around and manipulating masks and putting stuff on top of each other. I can just do it all in, a, in folder structure. So uh, strongly recommend. So let's take this color and let's get rid of this and let's make it uh, a leather material or something instead. So we have this leather. Let's just pick the first artificial leather. Okay, so now we want to mask that and just put it on this uh, this lower stitching or this lower uh, section of the boot. So we're going to mask, but instead of adding a white or a black mask, we're going to add a mask with a color selection. And then I'm going to go down and I'm going to pick my color and I'm going to pick this kind of periwinkle color. And now that is masked uh, and the lay, you know, so it's just on that layer. And if we go do another one, I'm going to do a couple because I'm going to show you. There, there are some pitfalls. Uh, you still have to, uh, you, you still might have to do some manual cleanup unless somebody can can show me a better way to do this. Uh, then I I welcome it. But if not, I'll show you what I do. So we have that, and we have our base leather. So let's make another folder and call it just like upper leather. And then we'll add a fill layer and call it something. All right, and let's use instead. Let's use this leather bag material this time. We'll still go kind of dark with it, but not as dark. Switch that to try planer. Up the scale just a bit. Okay, and now let's mask it out. So we'll add another mask with a color selection, and we will pick that color. Awesome. So now the top of that boot is there. Now, I, I said I was going to show you a couple things. So uh, another thing you can do is if you click on one of these color selection masks, and let's say we wanted uh, this toe section to also be this upper leather, then you can just click on your color selection. And when you pick a color, it's just going to add it to the mask. So you can go in and add and subtract colors from your mask as you need. Uh, it's really, really useful. Now, if you look really closely, you can see uh, along the edges, some of this is from height, uh, just being weird. And it's not a super high, re it's a 2K texture, right? It's not a, not a super high resolution texture. So um, some of that is just from the height and we can try to mess with that. So let's take this upper base color and turn off the height and see how it looks. But you see, you still have this line along the edge and that's actually a, the mask leaves a pixel of margin around it so you still might have to go in and do some manual cleanup so if I click on this mask here I can just grab a brush make it nice and small now normally I would do this with my tablet uh, and a pen and it's much easier but I'm using a mouse right now so now we can just go in and you can paint in uh, the mask it, it see how I went out of the lines there so you don't want to do that uh, and you can so you can pick which which side you want as well so say I wanted this uh, other leather to meet up against it now often on my model anyway I'm going to use a dirt generator or an edgeware generator or something like that uh, so it doesn't really matter which which side goes because these creases are going to have dirt in them uh, but so you get the idea we'll do one more just so you can kind of see what's up so we'll call this one brass hardware and so now let's pick a metal color actually I think I like uh, one of these bronze better swirled bronze I really like for worn pieces especially because you can add the wear with a different brass and then add some dirt and it looks really good but so there we go so now let's mask out with color we're gonna pick a color and now we're gonna pick a color for those brass things and there you go you filled that in and as said if you have to go in and clean up you can just grab the brush just be uh, I strongly recommend a pen for this, but you can tell that in that case, it's the leather that needs to be masked in there. 
and not the not the metal. So you can go in and mask it out. As said with a pen, it's it's really fast. It doesn't take that long at all. With a mouse it takes a little bit longer, but but yeah, you get the idea. And I will show you I do have this boot completed. So let's go ahead and take a look just so you can see. Uh, what the the final product looked like for me I think it looks pretty good it's a good looking boot the normals look really good yeah but at any rate I hope this helped for you uh, if you like this video give us a like and subscribe down below and I really appreciate it I'll talk to you next time